Thanks to PlayAsia for supporting this video. If you want to support me in the channel and get yourself a 5% discount, use the link in the description and use the coupon code BLUEVITA in order to save yourself a little bit of money. Thanks for your support, enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. I'm amazed that this exists. Who would have thought that I actually get around to remastering Crash Team Racing of all things? That's kind of awesome. Let's go take a look around. So, we've got a few things we can do before we actually go hop into a race. There's plenty of options to go through. Minimap, your, how your heads up display works. Skipping intro cutscenes, which I'm going to turn off. But, just a little bit warning about turning them on. The game will have this annoying tendency to need to load for about 20 seconds before immediately dropping you into a race. So if you turn that on, pay close attention. Also, yeah, Nitro Wheels, which is alright, but nothing I really pay attention to. Sound sliders and subtitles, which is nice. You can also turn on the legacy music, which is what I've done. I'm going to turn it off for the purpose of demonstration, but that is actually something that you can do, and I really appreciate that. We've got some controls here, and these are the one thing I think didn't make the transfer that well, mainly due to the fact that I'm playing this on Switch, and the bumpers on this controller aren't actually that comfortable. So trying to actually do power sliding on them isn't actually that great. There is an alternate here, but for some reason it takes away the ability to... It, well, it doesn't take away the ability, it was never really there to begin with. But it makes it so that you have to choose one to start power sliding with, and then use the other. And the, the two buttons are mapped to the L, tri the L bumper and the B button. It's really awkward. It just feels strange. So I'm just sticking with the standard control scheme. There's no rebinding, which I would have loved, but there you go, I suppose. Uh, your hints are just like little gameplay tips that we can go over. Your extras are your credits and your scrapbook. Obviously, you need to beat the entire game to get the scrapbook. And you've got some languages, but we won't bother with that. you got high scores, which lets you go through and see what the hot best times are. So my Relic Race on Insanity Beach is not great in all honesty. It's been a long time since i played this game. I've been very, very rusty, but there you go. So you can choose your area, which has your individual tracks. And then oddly enough, you have Crash Nitro Car, which are all locked away in their own little area. It's a little weird in all honesty, but there you go. So you have this thing called the Pit Stop. And the pit stop is kind of weird. So, one of the things they've added to this remaster over the top of the original game is a lot of cosmetics, and the majority of them are bought through here, but you can only buy them... You can only buy them every, like, 24 hours. That's when they reset. So, if, if I'm looking for a specific character that I really like, which I was because I was looking for... Uh, what's his face? I was looking for Entrance. But the only way I was able to get entrance was by grinding up 6,000 of the game's in-game credits and buying him from here alongside a bundle with everything else. You can't buy characters or anything like that individually outside of this store. You get a, a fair few characters, you get the original starter set, and you unlock the rest of the originals by playing through the game as you would. It's just a little bit bizarre that you have to come here to buy the ones they've added new to the game instead of like unlocking them they are also apparently planning to add a lot more new characters and stuff throughout the next few months as like seasonal events which is actually a pretty clever idea if i'm being perfectly honest gives the game a little bit of longevity i kind of like it so what happens if we unlock crunch let me guess, it's gonna be Entrance. No, it's Zem. Okay, that's fine. So you got three individual modes that you can play here. Online racing, the local arcade, and the adventure. We'll spend most of our time in the adventure, but I'll show you what's in the local arcade. I did try an online race. I wanted to try an online battle, which is a thing, and the pools for matchmaking them are different. And I wasn't able to find a match. I was able to find an online race, though, in which exactly what I expected to happen happened. 
Two people who are insanely good with their Nitro boosting were basically the first and second people. And I got knocked back to eighth via getting hit by two missiles, a Lightning Ball, and a Entropy Time Power Up all at the same time. So we're going to go play Adventure instead. There are some neat little options that you've got here. You can play through the Adventure in Classic Mode or in Nitro Fueled Mode, which gives you an option to change the AI difficulty and makes it so that you can do things like swap characters on the fly. So honestly, I'm not entirely sure why you wouldn't play on Nitro Fuel to begin with, and you get all the same rewards as in Classic Mode anyway. So yeah, no particular reason not to play in Nitro Fuel Mode. It's exactly the same otherwise, to my knowledge. Nevertheless, we're just gonna wait for it to load. Something that's incredibly common, at least with this port, I can't speak for the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One versions, but there is a pretty long loading time in between basically everything that you do. This gets most frustrating at the end of a race, if you win, for example, because you can win the race, have to wait 20 seconds for the game to load, go through an unskippable scene of you getting you a trophy, and then end up having to go through another 20 second loading time just to get back to the world map. It's kind of frustrating, but anyway, here we are. And apparently I'm in front of Coco Park. I'm not actually in the area that I'm up to. That's kind of annoying. We're gonna have to go and find that, aren't we? But yes, I'm playing as Coco because I like Coco. I've always liked Coco in this game. Uh, that's not the right direction. Still trying to get used to the fact that pressing down on the analog stick is how you reverse in this game, but there you go. Again, I haven't played this game in ages, but I'm picking it back up slowly. I can't even remember who I used to play as. I think I used to play as some of the um, slower characters with better turn ratios, but yeah. Alright, let's go play on Blizzard Bluff. Just, out of curiosity, have you looked up the Japanese names for the tracks? in Crash Team Racing and Crash Nitro Kart, they're bloody ridiculous. Like, the, the, the literal name for Crash Cove, the very first track in this game, is uh, High Speed and Drift in, in Tasmania, or something like that. It's just something seriously li literal and silly. I'm not entirely sure why, but there you go. I'm not entirely sure about the audio level, so I might be playing with it on the fly as we hop into the race. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So, yep, it's Crash Team Racing, all right. For those of you who aren't familiar with kart races, what kind of rock have you been living under? I mean, honestly, it is a kart racer. You've got the block, the, the blocks, the crates from Crash to Break for Wumpa Fruit and Power Ups. The power-ups, despite looking different from something you might say in, say, Mario... See, in, you might say, Mario Kart. They've all got pretty similar ideas, like, that's your blue shell, you previously saw the turbo. Uh, this bomb here is basically the green shell. You've got the red shell equivalent in missiles. You've also got a shield that you can also fire out ahead of you. You've got the Entropy Time Clock, which is the equivalent of the Lightning Bolt. There are some neat tricks that you can do, like rolling crates, um, rolling crates, rolling bombs into crates in order to actually get them from long distance, which is actually a pretty useful technique from time to time. Once you hit 10 Wumpa Fruit, which you can do by picking them up off the world or getting them in crates like that, your power-ups will be improved. This involves doing things like turning TNT crates into nitro crates, making green potions red. This will usually increase their effectiveness. For example, I mean, if you've never played Crash Bandicoot before, that was the TNT crate there. It takes a few seconds to explode. In this game, if you run into a nitro crate, 
it immediately explodes and takes you out. I am playing this on medium difficulty, mainly because I don't want to focus too much on the mini turbos, but if you play this game on the normal difficulty, you will fly ahead if you are good with your mini turbos. You can just see right here that I'm quite far ahead as things are considered. At the end of every race, you get a bunch of credits. You will build up a pretty significant amount of credits over time because after about two to three hours of game time, I had about 3,000 credits, which was more than enough to buy a new character and a new skin. Which I will show off shortly. What you just saw there was an example of an adventure mode race. The way this game's adventure mode works is you get dropped into an area and you have four races that you need to do, usually in order. They let you pick between the first two sometimes, but then they eventually just go on a linear path. You get one and then you unlock the rest and once you get all four you can take on the boss of the area and once you beat the boss of the area you'll get his key which lets you move on and it also unlocks bonus challenges so you'll unlock the ability to do ctr oh that's weird i remember there being a loading time here maybe i'm just not paying that much attention go me But yes, once you have been the boss, you'll unlock two sets of challenges, which are the Relic Race and the CTR Challenge. They are both dicks. <laughs> That's the only way I have to describe them. They are both very hard. They did not let up on the difficulty for this game at all. I promise you that much. Because, god damn. The challenges are indeed hard. But yeah, loading times. You use the relics and the CTR coins that you earn from relic races and CTR challenges, obviously, to unlock extra things. The CTR challenges unlock the cups which will unlock gems which will unlock the final race and then you'll use relics to unlock the other final race once you get all four boss keys you can fight nitrous oxide and win the game obviously but the rest is just there for you know extra challenges and stuff like that so the game's basic set of mechanics are supplemented by the turbo boosts. The turbo boosts are incredibly important. Whoops. The turbo boosts are incredibly important. You have to hop into a drift with one and then wait for the bar in the bottom right corner there to fill up as much as humanly possible. Once you've done that... Jesus Christ, these minecarts hate me today. Once you've done that, you hit the other button in this case it's uh, both bumpers but of course on the other control scheme as I complained about earlier it's mainly uh, the one of the bumpers and then the B button but yeah once you've done that you hit the button and it gets a bit of a boost going on you can do this up to three times and you can chain as many as you like together in order to basically snake your way down the track it's more or less the uh, it's, it's very similar to the way that Mario Kart does it, except you don't actually have to push the boost. God damn it. How do I always end up in set? That fucking crate. Jesus. Uh, not crate. Minecart. I can't remember any of the proper terms, can I? And I finished like Crash Games more times than I can count. Not this one. I haven't. I have not finished Crash Team Racing anywhere near as many times as I have the others, but I'm pretty sure I've done it at least once. But yes, the, while the turbo boosting isn't as similar as your good old fashioned Mario Kart boosting, it still has a lot of skill behind it. Your characters do have very weird drifting arcs. So unfortunately you do have to come in first to actually progress, which is 
a little annoying. At least you still get coins for it. Let's give that one more try. If it doesn't work, I'll just pull us back. Then we can do some other stuff instead. At least I get to start in third this time, but in this game it's not like that helps much. But yeah, you have a very, very unusual drifting arc with your turbos, in, in, with your drifting in your turbos in this game. So it is absolutely a matter of skill to get used to the mini turbos and you absolutely do need to get good at it if you want to be even remotely competent. I saw that thing coming. I was so expecting it to hit me. Unfortunately, I just took a missile, so it's about the same effect anyway. But yes, you do absolutely need to have a modicum of skill to get used to the mini turbos in this game. And I fully recommend you do so immediately as soon as you start playing, even if it means putting it down on easy so that you can get used to it. Because mini turbos in this game are everything. You absolutely need to be intensely good. Especially once you get to the relic races, you will 110% need to get on the relic races in order you will absolutely need to get on the mini turbos to stand a chance in the relic races there is no ifs ands or buts about this and if you are not good at them you will not be able to actually win them or at least even get close i really should be making a, an effort to get, get those wampa fruit because they do give you a little bit extra speed not much but in a game like this every Every little bit counts, right? So you do have a series of, like, preset... You do have a series of, like, preset stats that every individual cart has. And I might as well go and demonstrate right now by picking a different character. It's mainly just... There's some that are faster but have less turning. There's some that are down the middle. And there's some that have more turn but less speed and less acceleration. And then there's some that just focus entirely on the acceleration. Those are your four preset stats and it's determined by what character you pick. So let's go through some of the customization now. Bloody encoding lag. Taking out four seconds worth of frames from this blade 20 minutes of video. That's going to suck. Right. Also, you can press X to um, change of... Yeah, to change your speedometer for some reason there. But anyway, if we go to the customization here, we can pick our character, of course. Ripper Rip was fun. You just... Look at his face. It's like a dog that's happy to see you. It's great. And then if we go to Crunch... Yep, he's really speedy, but he can't turn very well. Which is why I'm going to pick him. But yeah, there's your um, extra skins. You win races with them, and you unlock them, and then there's one that you have to unlock by buying. Oh, yeah. Then you got your carts, which there's a lot of different kinds of carts, man. A lot of different things you can do. Decals, and wheels, and different kinds of paint jobs, and individual stickers you can put on the front, like, represent. And you can also just randomize the entire thing if you like. Yeah, as you can see, we don't actually have anything else to do here because we're having a little bit of trouble win winning that race. So, let's go back and actually try something a little different. Yep, his turning is a lot different. So, this is... Hmm, Rampage Ruins. Yeah, I should probably demonstrate. So, strangely enough, in this game's campaign... They do, they do have a battle mode, but instead of using the actual battle mode, they give you this weird little scavenger hunt to do. I never really liked these parts of the game. So the way this works is they drop you into the battle arena and they hide 20 crystals. You need to go and find all 20 crystals within a pretty sharp time limit. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to skip this. 
Yeah, like 85 seconds. That is not much. So you need to... Basically, your first time through, you're not going to ski in any chance whatsoever, especially if you do something stupid like this. So yeah, you're not going to ski in any chance whatsoever at getting this done the first time because you're going to need to go around and basically memorize where every single crystal is. Because you basically need to make a beeline for every crystal in the area. Like, look at that one up there. You would not know that's there the first time. You would absolutely miss that at least once. I've played the stage, like, once before, but, I mean, look, I'm already, like, there, there is absolutely no way I'm going to get the other 10 crystals in 30 seconds. There is not a chance. Especially since I just completely missed that one. At least the bomb's useful for getting some of the TNT crates out of your way. If I could hit them, Jesus. Might as well just let that explode. But yep, as you can see, if I knew the level better, I would stand a chance. But that's simply not going to happen. Trust me, this is tight. I have a screenshot on my Twitter of me trying to do the first example of the of this level. And I literally ran out of time directly in front of the last crystal. It can be a bit of a dick. You unlock that once you beat all four races with a first place trophy, by the way. Why am I losing so many frames? My computer isn't doing anything at the moment. Right. Uh, let's go and play another track. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this one's got a CTR challenge. Good. We're going to do the CTR challenge first of all. The CTR challenge is very easy to understand. If you've played Diddy Kong Racing before. <laughs> I don't know why... Th th these challenges just make me think of Diddy Kong Racing. Probably because I played a, I played Diddy Kong Racing first. I don't know where that actually came out in relation to this. But basically, there's three letters hidden around the level. You need to find all three of them and come in first. Not the hardest thing to do in the world. But definitely difficult. Because the Crash Team Racing tracks have a lot of shortcuts... And if there is a shortcut, you absolutely are guaranteed to have a letter in there somewhere. So you basically need to learn the tracks in order to stand a chance. Thankfully, this just lets me show off another race as well, so it's not like it's the worst thing in the world to do a CTR challenge. There's my card and there's my crunch. Let's go. Hey, how's my exhaust taste? Oh, would you look at that? Just out in the grass where it's going to be a massive pain in the neck. Oh, there's the C. Now we just have to find the R. I'm willing to bet that there's a shortcut on this level I'm not familiar with. And it's going to be right inside it. Where the fuck was that missile going? Holy shit. All right. Well, oh, yep, there's the R, and that's the shortcut. There is no way that isn't some kind of shortcut. And I can see the path on the minimap, so yeah. Gonna have to try and get that on the next lap. You get the general idea. I don't mind the CTR challenges that much. If anything, they help you learn the tracks, which is actually pretty good practice for the relic races. The game looks absolutely gorgeous, by the way, even on the Switch. There's some pretty clear aliasing going on, but, I mean, it's the Switch, so... Oh, bollocks. Yeah, there's some pretty clear aliasing going on, but, I mean, it's the Switch. I'm willing to forgive it because it's the Switch. And it still manages to look and run mostly fantastic. I've seen some minor performance drops. There's probably been more failures in the encoding of this video 
than there has been actual performance drops in the game itself that I've played. I haven't played much of it in um, portable mode because my Joy-Cons are just outright broken and refuse to work properly, so yeah, I'm sorry about that. But in the docked mode at least, it looks and runs absolutely fine. They did a really good job with remastering it. The tracks are immediately recognizable while at the same time not... Uh, while at the same time looking way better than they used to. Like, absolutely. Uh, seriously? Alright, I have no idea how you're supposed to get onto this shortcut. What kind of missile was that? God damn. It's alright, I'm not going to win anyway, so I might as well just beat the crap out of everyone on my way back to the front. But yeah, that, that kind of sucked. It's alright though, just, just demonstrating. Nothing wrong with a little bit of demonstrating. But yeah, as I was saying... Game looks fantastic. They've done a great job with converting the levels to a high definition format. The all the little Easter eggs, like enemies running around and just stuff off in the distance, looks great. They've obviously put a lot of time, care, and attention into the presentation. The music is still pretty good as well, but again, they've given you the option to just flick the original music back on, which I absolutely love. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever, in my point of view. It's great. Like, they've done an absolutely fantastic job with the presentation, and I I approve wholeheartedly. Notably, the save stations are still there, but the game's actually got autosave now, so it's not like they're really useful. Uh, oh, right. There's, um, no Relic Race there, so I... Well, I mean, I could, but... Nah, Coco Park's a boring track. Uh, this one, then. Papu's Pyramid. Sure, this is actually one of the favorites, as far as I'm aware, with the fans. So this is a Relic Race. If you've played Crash Bandicoot before, you know exactly how this works. So there will be crates strewn around the level that we need to break in order to freeze the clock. Not to mention we need to get through the levels as fast as humanly possible. The faster we do it, the better a Relic we get. We don't need to get any... I don't think anyway. I haven't played this game in ages. I couldn't tell you. We don't need to get any better than a Sapphire Relic in order to actually progress in the game. But there are Relics for lower times, if you so desire. Papu's Pyramid. Icicle Pyramid. Yes, that's a Diddy Kong Racing reference. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I just, I've just i got Diddy Kong Racing on the brain. These, I believe these two came out very close to each other, actually. So they're quite similar. Yeah, there's a crate. And there's some more crates. And we need to try and hit as many of them as possible. Is there a shortcut that lets me get up to them? Holy crap. Oh. Whoops. And you can see there's a three up there. They've made it dangerous to get help with the environmental... Well, to make the environmental hazards actually hazards, which is very interesting. Ding, ding. And... Managed to miss the crate anyway, but thankfully I can just get on this shortcut. Still managed to miss, miss the crates anyway, because of course I do. That's a dangerous crate to get. God. But yes, the times that you have to get in this are incredibly tight, even by, like, regular racing standards. So, you really do need to learn the levels and learn where all the crates are, because you get three laps to break as many of them as humanly possible. So you want to break as many of them as humanly possible. And when you fuck up like that, in most situations, you might as well just give up. If you are going for any kind of, like, high speed whatsoever, you absolutely should give... Wow! Not only did I miss the crate, I managed to get eaten by the damn thing anyway. Can you tell that I haven't practiced? Because I absolutely have not practiced. I mean, I'm roughly familiar with the track, but... I mean, you don't have to get absolutely every crate in order to get just the regular Sapphire, but trust me, if you want some of the higher 
If you want some of the better times, you absolutely, positively, without a shadow of a doubt, need every single crate you can get. I probably just lost all the time I would have saved by going for those crates because I fucked up the downswing. Anyway, let's go around here and get that. I assume that's a two on the end. So yeah, as you can see, I'm in absolutely no way going to actually make it to the finish line in time. At least I managed to get the crate that time, but yeah. I, uh, my time has expired. So when I say you have to learn the levels, I mean it. Despite the fact that I got like 36 out of 48 crates, I still screwed up badly enough enough times that I am absolutely... I am 10 seconds over. So yes, there is absolutely a lot of challenge here. At least you get coins for every time you fail, so it's not like the practice is for nothing. So that's a pretty good example of what you get in the single player content, except for the arcade stuff, and we need to go and take a look at that, because there's a very good reason for it. When the game decides it wants to load. In about 10 seconds. So if we quit... Loading times, shakes fist. So if we go to the local arcade mode, we've got a few things here that are interesting. So we have the usual single race and trophy races. You've got your battle mode, your time trial, and you've got the relic races, CTR challenges, and the crystal challenges. They're just here. If you want to play them for whatever reason. This even includes the Crash Nitro Kart stuff, because they actually did every single track in Crash Nitro Kart alongside the alongside the Crash Team Racing stuff. I approve of this, because I actually like Crash Nitro Kart better than I do Crash Team Racing, if I want to be perfectly honest with you. I just think it's a better game in general. But, yeah, the fact that it's all here is actually really damn awesome. And I am going to hop into a race on one of my favorite tracks of Crash Team Racing. We're going to put the AI on hard, too, because why the fuck not? Uh, we've also got Mirror Mode down there, if you're interested. And let's just hit randomize just for the fun of it, eh? Hey, Ripper. Let's go random, but not crunch. Whatever, that'll do. Hey, Tiny. Tiny looks great. Like, I, I approve of Tiny's model, actually. I approve of it quite a bit. He looks absolutely terrifying, which is wonderful. That kind of fits his character. Most of the... Actually, that reminds me of just a minor thing I want to bring up before I go into why I'm disappointed with the Crash Team Racing stuff. The thing about the um, character voices. Everybody sounds alright, except for Uka Uka, who sounds more like a surfer dude than he does a proper terrifying mask of death and destruction. It was, it's weird. I very recently played um, the original Crash Bandicoot game, so I know what his voice sounds like. And this voice sounds like someone would rather be at the beach. It's weird. But anyway. So yeah, Crash Nitro Kart stuff. Getting a huge boost off that jump there, because why the fuck not? Right. So yeah, the Crash Nitro Kart stuff. I don't disapprove of the fact that it's here. Absolutely not. Like... No, no sense of the word whatsoever do I, in no way whatsoever do I disapprove of the Crash Nitro Kart stuff being here. I've played a couple of the tracks and they're more or less just as I remember them. Maybe without some of the weirdo anti- bollocks. Maybe without some of the weirdo anti grab stuff they, they had going on in that game, but, well, I'm, I don't particularly mind because, you know, the original Crash uh, Team Racing didn't have it, so I guess there had to be a little bit of Jesus Louises. Uh, yeah, it's fine as is. The problem, though, is the fact that they, other than coming into the local arcade stuff here, 
you don't usually get... You, you don't get any, like, actual single-player content whatsoever. Which is a disappointment to me, personally. Because I would have loved the ability to at least play through the original Crash Nitro Kart's adventure mode as well. I mean, since they included it, why not, right? But... No, they've decided to just ignore that. And just include it as, like, things that you can play in the single-player and online multiplayer stuff. And obviously you can have, like, you can do split-screen as well, but just, just saying, yeah. I'm definitely going to lose this. I don't think there's any point in continuing. You've seen the, you've seen the level. Let's go play another one just to get as much gameplay footage in here as possible. But yes, the now let's do battle instead because there's actually a fair bit to see here. Uh, we'll do it on a Crash Nitro Kart level that I like. Uh, we'll do uh, Terra Drone. There's, there's a few options here: score points, uh, capture the flag, uh, basically that coin mode of Mario Kart. Uh, Battle Royale and uh, Juggernaut, I suppose. So we'll do we'll do just a regular limit battle. No, we'll do just a regular limit battle. Thank you. And you can say as many AI and uh, difficulty and stuff as you like. At least you can see that it's um. At least you can see that it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Completely lost my train of thought. Let's randomize again. Hey, dingo. Dingo, dingo, dingo. Right. No, we'll, we'll just go with Crash. Why not? But yeah, it's just kind of disappointing that you just have to go through and play on these tracks normally. That if you don't want to, like, go through... If you don't want to go through online multiplayer. And the few races I did manage to play on online multiplayer, I voted for Crash Nitro kart tracks but i got outvoted every single time which was kind of disappointing because i love the crash nitro kart tracks still it's good that they're here and they're actually adding new tracks as free dlc so like th there's nothing to complain about there's a ton of stuff to see and do at least I don't think we need to see an intro for a bloody battle track. Oh, what team are I on? I assume blue. Come here. Missed. Yeah, I mean, listen to me complaining about how 12 tracks they didn't even need to include in the game, but they did anyway just out of the goodness of their hearts, aren't really that great because there's no single player. That is a first world problems excuse right there. The, the game itself is fully featured, it feels great to drive around, the mechanics feel like they've been preserved more than well enough, the amount of content on offer is great, the presentation of the remaster is fantastic it looks as just as good as the remasters of the crash it looks just as good as the remasters did of the original crash games and yeah if you are even remotely a fan of crash why haven't you bought this yet probably because you were waiting to see how good it was but yeah they've done a great job of it i fully I, I can fully recommend this for people who enjoyed the original Crash Team Racing because... God damn, I'm not doing very well, am I? Come here. All I need to do... Bitch. All I need to do is either run into you or throw it at you. Damn it. Damn it. Thankfully, you can turn off power-ups, and I'm thinking about turning off... Oh, God. <laughs> Managed to save my own ass there, but I can't hit anyone else to save my life. Why am I constantly getting turbos? Fuck's sake. <laughs> I need attacking weapons. 
Thank you. What? God. This is starting to irk me. Well, I didn't bloody nothing. Somehow our team still won, though. And thankfully, you do get coins even for finishing things in just the regular single-player arcade mode, which is nice. At least it gives you a few options when you're going through and playing through the Crash Nitro Kart stuff. But yeah, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is a really good remaster. It maintains the challenge of the original while upholding its fantastic look and includes a lot of content, even a bunch of extra stuff that they really didn't need to do, but it's still really nice to see anyway. But the, like the Crash Nitro Kart tracks, for example, if you're looking for a good kart racing game, I recommend it. Personally, I still rank Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed and like Mario Kart 8 maybe over this, but at the same time, it's still got its own charm and feel and general fun to it that I am happy to recommend to anyone who wants a good kart racer. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.